Hey there, welcome to Mr. Lehan Teaches You Stuff. This is Grade 9 Chemistry Lesson 11, Ionic Compounds Part 2, Compounds with Multivalent Elements and Polyatomic Ions. So we'll start off with ionic compounds that have multivalent elements in them. Um, and our question is, if iron combines with oxygen, what does it form? Now, the first thing to note here is that iron is in this question, and iron is not one of the first 20 elements. And the only reason I would put in an element that's not one of the first 20 uh, is because it is a multivalent element, which means it can form multiple ions. So iron can form ions with a charge of 3 plus or 2 plus. So we'll have to go through both of those. Oxygen can only form a charge of 2 minus. So when we have iron 2 plus and oxygen 2 minus, they're both 2s. So we can ignore the charges, and we end up with FeO. When we have iron 3 plus and oxygen 2 minus, they're different. So we cross down those ionic charges, and we end up with Fe2O3. So when they combine, they either form FeO or Fe2O3. All right, now let's look at how we need to name these multivalent ionic compounds. Uh, when you have a multivalent ion in an ionic compound, you have to identify what the charge is for that multivalent ion. Uh, and you, you need to include the charge in brackets. So for example, FeO is iron 2 oxide. And it's iron 2 because it contains Fe2+. Fe2O3 is iron 3 oxide. And it's iron 3 oxide because it contains Fe3+. So it's the charge on the ion. That's what makes the number in the bracket. So remember that the 3 in iron 3 oxide does not mean the formula is Fe3O. That's what a lot of people get confused about. That's a, that's a common mistake right there. The 3 represents the charge of the iron ion. And when you're naming these multivalent ionic compounds, don't forget to change the end of the nonmetal to ide. All right, now we're going to go through some examples of ionic compounds and figure out what their name is. So the first one, CuCl, uh, and the second one, CuCl2, those are both copper and chlorine together. So let's look at copper. Copper is a multivalent element. It can either be 2 plus or 1 plus and chlorine is 1 minus. So we'll just go through both possibilities and see which one's which. So we'll start off with the 2 plus, so copper 2 plus and chlorine. When we cross these down we end up with CuCl2. So if it's copper 2 it's gonna be the second one there, so we got copper 2 chloride. The other kind of copper is just 1 and when copper is 1 and chlorine's 1 they're the same, so we just cross them out, and we end up with CuCl. So that would be the first one, and that must be copper 1 chloride. All right, now we'll go down to the next two. Uh, we're looking at Hg, which is mercury, and O, which is oxygen. So Hg is the multivalent element here. Uh, it can form a charge of 2 plus or 1 plus. And then oxygen forms a charge of 2 minus. So when they're both 2, Hg2 plus and O2 minus, they're the same, so we just cross those out, and we end up with HgO. So that would be the bottom one. So the bottom one must be mercury 2 oxide, because the charge on the mercury is 2. So the other one, when mercury is 1 plus, oxygen is 2 minus. We cross those down, we end up with Hg2O, and that is mercury 1 oxide. So there you go, that's how you figure out the names. Now we'll go the opposite way. Uh, we'll start off with the names and we will try to figure out what the chemical formula is. So for iron 3 nitride, uh, first thing we need to know is that nitrogen has a charge of 3 minus. Now, do we need to look at the periodic table to see what charge iron has? No, we don't, because we've been told in the name. That's why it's helpful. Uh, 
So iron 3 nitride means that iron has a charge of 3 plus. So if iron's 3 plus and nitrogen is 3 minus, then they're both 3s, so they're both the same, and we can cross them out. And we just end up with FEN. So there's the first chemical formula. Now we'll look at iron 2 nitride. So now we know that iron has a charge of 2 plus. Because the numbers are different, 2 plus and 3 minus, we have to keep them. And we'll cross them down, and we end up with Fe3N2. So that's iron 2 nitride. All right, now we're into lead 2 fluoride. So fluorine has a charge of 1 minus. And we know the lead, which is Pb, has a charge of 2, because it says so in the name. So Pb2 plus, F minus, cross those down, we end up with PbF2. Now we'll do lead 4 nitride. So we're back to nitrogen again, which is 3 minus. Um, and we know the lead is 4 because it says so in the name. So we'll cross those down. The 4 goes over to the N, the 3 goes over to Pb, and we end up with Pb3N4. So that's how you figure out the chemical formulas from the name. All right, now we're going to look at polyatomic ions. So polyatomic ions, remember, contain multiple elements, but they act just like one ion. Um, and an example is phosphate, which is PO4, 3 minus. So what is the chemical formula for magnesium phosphate? Well, magnesium is an alkaline earth metal, so it has a charge of 2 plus. And we just said phosphate has a charge of 3 minus. So just like any other um, ionic compound, we'll cross those numbers down. And we end up with Mg3PO4,2. Uh, now you'll notice the PO4 there is in brackets. And that's because we need to keep that together. Um, the reason why we need to keep them together is because PO4,2 is not the same as P2O8. So a phosphate group looks like this. So PO4, it's got three, a charge of 3 minus. Um, so if we have two of those, it would have a total charge of 6 minus. Now P2O8 looks very similar, but it actually only has a charge of 4 minus, um, whereas two phosphates would be 6 minus. So it's not even the same chemical, and it wouldn't behave the same and it wouldn't use or it wouldn't bond to as many magnesium ions. So that's why we need to keep these things in brackets, keep the polyatomic ions together in a bracket so it's its own separate unit. So remember that phosphate is not the same ion as phosphide. Um, magnesium phosphate is Mg3PO42, that's what we just figured out. But magnesium phosphide is just magnesium and phosphorus together, Mg3P2. So that's an important thing to look out for on tests. Whenever you see 8 at the end, um, it's going to be a polyatomic ion of some sort, whereas ide is always just an element. So good thing to remember for a test. So now we're going to go through a couple examples of finding out what the chemical formula is just based on the name. So we'll start off with magnesium hydroxide. Um, and first of all, magnesium is in the alkaline earth metals, second column of the periodic table, which means it will form a charge of 2 plus. And hydroxide, there's no easy way to figure this out looking at the periodic table, but hydroxide uh, is OH minus. So to get the charge for a polyatomic ion like that, you're just going to have to remember it uh, or have some sort of cheat sheet. So we have Mg2 plus and OH minus. We'll cross the charges and we end up with MgOH2. And don't forget to put the OH in brackets. Next up we have sodium hydroxide. Now sodium is in the alkali metals. It is in the first column, so it forms a charge of 1 plus. And we know hydroxide is 1 minus. So they're both 1s, uh, which means we can cross those out and ignore them. And we just end up with NaOH. All right, next example, we're going to look at sodium carbonate. Uh, 
So carbonate is CO3 2 minus, and we know sodium is just 1 plus. So when we cross the charges here, uh, we end up with Na2CO3. And our last example here is iron 3 sulfate. So sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Uh, and we know that the charge for the iron is 3 because it's in the name. So Fe3 plus, SO4 2 minus, we cross the iron charges, and we end up with Fe2, SO4, 3. And don't forget to put that polyatomic ion in brackets when you add the extra 3 there. All right, now we're going to do the reverse. We're going to start off with the chemical formula and try to figure out what the name is. So for the first one here, we have Mg, which is magnesium, and then HCO3 is something called hydrogen carbonate. That's a polyatomic ion. So this ends up being magnesium hydrogen carbonate. Uh, next we have beryllium, and then the PO4 is a phosphate. So this is beryllium phosphate. All right, the next one's a little bit more tricky. Uh, we have Ni, which is nickel, and nickel is not one of the first 20 elements, so the only reason I would put it in a question is because it is a multivalent element, which means that it's got a charge of either 2 plus or 3 plus for its ion. So we have to figure out which one this is. Uh, now luckily we can do a little bit of reverse engineering here. Um, CO3 2 minus is carbonate. So you'll see that that 2 if we bring it up from the nickel, would be the 2 minus for the carbonate. And then the 3 would be the 3 plus for the nickel when we bring it up. So that means this must be nickel 3 carbonate, because that 3 belongs with the nickel. Uh, now if we go down to the next one, we have nickel and PO4, which remember is phosphate. And if we do the same thing with the arrows, PO4 is 3 minus. Yep, that's right. That's where that 3 comes from. And the 2 then goes to the nickel. So that must be nickel 2 plus. Which means this one is nickel 2 phosphate. So there you go. That's the name. Well, that's it for this video. Tune in next time for molecular compounds, which will be our last grade 9 chemistry lesson.